Yo, I'm Eris Uju. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be talking about the day one patch notes in full detail. Just make sure you subscribe to the channel and like the video if you end up getting exactly what you came for. So in the patch, there's going to be general crash fixes. People have been crashing, they're going to get that fixed up for you. So it's going to happen significantly less. They're going to make general improvements to the game optimization. So those of you with better graphics cards, you're going to be able to utilize those better. If your graphics card isn't so good, there's still going to be ways you can improve that through the game and through your system. When it comes to the bots in the game, they're going to be better and they're going to have better behaviors. Crossplay and account linking are going to be improved and work properly now. And there's going to be fixes and improvements to matchmaking and pre-made lobbies. And they're going to be making changes to escapes so that it can't be body blocked and people can escape properly. I'm pretty sure Chubby was able to block the end game escape, so he's not going to be able to do that anymore. When it comes to items and experience, the exploits in that regard, it's going to be proper. It's going to not be bugged out anymore. There was a situation where people were falling under the map in cocoons or just players, and yeah, that's definitely going to be fixed. Definitely needs a fix on that one. When it comes to Steam, the language options weren't uh, being proper there, so that'll get fixed as well. So the cinematic when loading into a game would show a bunch of clowns walking in. Um, it wasn't always accurate, so maybe they'll have the proper cotton candy ray gun and or the proper amount of clowns walking into the game. They are also fixing up the collision issues in the game and people getting stuck in parts of the map. And when it comes to the experience, you're going to be gaining that properly now during certain events, as well as fixes to the SFX timing issue. Now to focus on more so the human side of the patches. So there's a change made so that repair items aren't going to spawn so close to the uh, escape routes themselves directly. So it's going to take longer to escape basically. When it comes to the meeting point, you know how it shows you where the escape routes are for the most part? When you leave that, it's not going to just stay on your screen as long as it has been. When it comes to proximity chat, the, the VoIP seems to have been reduced. Or just to be more accurate. They also fixed a cross error that would remain on the screen after dropping a weapon. And when it comes to outfits, they made sure that all the other outfits will have a flashlight incorporated as well, since they were missing. When it comes to looting here, some loot tainers would be closed, although they wouldn't have an item in there. Or you wouldn't be able to interact with it if a player joined a, a game that was ongoing. Another issue that was patched up is people being able to regain stamina after no item was even indulged uh, whilst sprinting. Another thing that would be taken care of is the Cocoon VFX, and it would remain on your screen sometimes even after you've broken out of a cocoon. When it comes to throwing an item, the prediction line would sometimes not be accurate or, well, it wouldn't show up sometimes, so that's going to be patched up. When it comes to using the compass, sometimes the escape routes would kind of just be stuck on your screen, so that's going to be fixed so that you actually have to activate it and hold it so you can see where the escape routes are. Another big fix is when humans would interact really often in quick succession, it would it'd cause the player to be basically locked in the interaction. Another issue that was going on is players could not uncrouch from their certain locations, and now they'll be able to crouch like usual, or stand rather. And this next one says, fix the issue where blunt weapons were able to kill down clowns. This is definitely a huge one, and I'm glad this is getting fixed. Another issue fix is cocoon outlines when a bot was in it was behaving incorrectly. When it comes to the fear indicator or the fear aspect of the game playing human, if you're in a hiding spot, it's going to reduce that for you. And lastly, on the human end, the reduced damage the axe deals to gated gates will be slowed down. So the damage to the, uh, to the exit gate using an axe isn't going to be as strong. All right, now focusing on the clown changes that's coming up in this day one patch. So the clown camera angle while using the balloon dog is going to be fixed. Well, not so much fixed, more so that it'll work better when you're using it. When it comes to the clowns using VoIP, it's going to be better when it comes to team chat to proximity chat. So the bug with the clown load at 3 will be fixed. There's also going to be a prompt implemented for people trying to use an invisible car when there's not enough space to use it. And for the clowns that had a certain quality setting, trying to use a clown jump would be difficult, so visually difficult so they're going to change that and adjust that. There was also issue where clowns that were using clowntality will become interlocked after performing that so that's also going to be fixed as well. 
And it also states that clowns were able to use a clowntality while in the middle of an interaction. So I guess one way this was used is if a clown is constantly swinging, he can't simultaneously hold the uh, clowntality and still achieve that. He would have to wait till he stops swinging, potentially. When it comes to the cotton candy ray guns, they weren't properly connecting to the humans, so that's going to be fixed up. Another thing with the cotton candy ray gun is the detection radius and close quarters engagements are going to be strengthened. There was also a slight bug with the firing animation using the pen shot blaster and laser beams. And if you do manage to cocoon a human, when you throw the cocoon at a human, it's going to do more damage now. And clowns will also be able to gain more movement speed while sprinting backwards, or just sprint backwards faster than they were before. When it comes to the popcorn bazooka, there was an issue causing it to deal double damage, so that's going to be tuned to be more accurate. There will also be reduced range to the popcorn bazooka, more in line with the VFX. So that should mean that little reticle on your screen, that circle, should be slightly smaller. They're also reducing the environmental damage of the popcorn bazooka. So for example, when you would shoot a door with a popcorn bazooka, it would just decimate the door, instantly disappear, turn to dust. And even if you were to use like a hammer, for example, it would take multiple swings. Another thing that's going to be changed with this weapon is the tracking time of the, of the gun. I know some of these changes sound really harsh, but it's still going to be a strong weapon. And even if it doesn't track as strong, the humans are still going to be sprinting so you can track them anyways. And you still got a popcorn trail to follow if you really, if you really need that. In other news, the Pentashot Blaster is getting a buff. This is the cotton candy gun that basically works like a shotgun, so I'm really interested to see how these buffs are going to come in. When it comes to the Bounce Caster, they're going to reduce the cottonization damage, so you're not going to be able to cocoon as quickly as you were before. So yes, the item's getting nerfed, but on the other hand, you got a buff coming to the Mallet because you're going to get the increased charge speed with that weapon, as well as the Pentashot Blaster. And when it comes to the hypnotic lure, the escape threshold is going to be reduced. Alright y'all, that is one big patch. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Yo, let me know what you guys think. And, and y'all take it easy. I'll see y'all out there.